What's up, y'all? It's your boy Vinny Dangerous, and I am back with another installment of Dangerous Minds. Got a special episode for you today. I got a legend straight out of DC. Wait a minute. So make sure I was gonna call you Black Indian, but it's DC. also Yashua. So it's like, so to make sure you got it right. Yeah. So yo, it's my brother. Black Indian, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's a legend, man. Like, first of all, how you feeling today, brother? How you doing today? Man, I can't complain, V, man. Everything beautiful. I mean, I just did dialysis. I got kidney disease, so my kidneys failed in May. So I've been back and forth this, but, you know what I'm saying? For the culture, you know, I, I'm going to tune in all the time. So I'm feeling brother, good, bro. Oh, well, yo, I appreciate you doing that. You know, uh, take making the time out to speak to me, especially after that, uh, after everything that you've been through. I was gonna ask you about this a little later, but since you brought it up, like you know, so how has that affected you know your ability to you know just kind of keep things going? Because I know you you're yeah. on the move all the time. It, 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 it's y'all. It's the it's the young generation of hip hop. Is the you know, the love for it. So as long as I got like a love for it, you know how some people die after they retire because they don't know what to do anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, they just can't kick it on the beach. So me, I'm I'm busy, try to stay busy with hip hop and that's what's keeping me going. It's a, it's a lot, but you know, uh, y'all definitely do it. Like new music, um, new ideas, that new soul. Mm -hmm. That's what make you know what I'm saying keep going. Cause I, I was a fan. I fell in love with it. My you know, rock him to Nas and blew my mind. So is that as I still hear new music, new mm -hmm. artists, I hear them that same way. So it's just like I'd be excited to have that, you know. The number one profession in the world. Everyone wants to be a uh, entertainer or yes. a rapper. <laughs> so especially hip hop. Everybody wanna be part of the culture. <laughs> Exactly. So, you know, to have the be like have the number one jobs, like, you know, if I was a computer analyst or something like that and I was top of my field, I'd be like, Yeah, I got the best fucking job. <laughs> <every day." laughs> yo, it's dope, man. And hey, yo, I could definitely yeah. hear the passion and stuff in your music. Like I was just listening to a few of your joints. I actually was at the gym earlier today. And okay. man, your I was had yours in rotation, and man, it's got you got some energy behind your stuff that we ain't felt in a minute, man. And like, I really enjoy listening to your music. Yeah, yeah, because you know I come from the era. I'm from DC, so go go is the, is the dominant music. But when mm -hmm. it comes to hip hop, um, you know, rap was just strong. I mean, like, there's no way that you could not hear those records. From Chub Rock, Special Ed, all the way to mm. like, you know, Showbiz and AG, Pete Rock, you know, uh, Dilla. And you start to hear those type of records and you and you have a respect for it. You know, one, that's one thing DC mm -hmm. hip hop has is a respect for, you know, MCing. Like, we're more MCs than rappers, you know, mm. and, uh, and, and, and this hip hop thing. And so, is that it's that love for that era of music digging in the crates era like even though we from the hood we had a respect for that digging in the crates era that a lot a lot of young people you know don't even understand that era like sampling and mm -hmm. so, on, so on is like you know it's it's nothing fancy and new about it anymore mm -hmm. and so um and then you got industries that you know they they want to push and push the the that uh you know robotic sound yeah and you know so it was like you know to take old vinyl records and stuff like that i just want to keep that fresh like i still work with you know a lot of people that worked with you know the real trill spill uh music the serpent music like that but i got love for them too but it's the it's that sampling where you know that first hip-hop is is mm -hmm. great Yo, man, and yeah, I could definitely tell you a student of the game, like just listening to your stuff, and oh, you know, it's, like it's oh no problem. It's like because I remember, you know, like my dad sat me down with the CD book when I told him I wanted to rap. I was maybe like 12, 13, and he sat it sat me down with it, like oh you want to rap, so you got to listen to classics. So he made me sit down and listen to like Wu Tang. <laughs> he made me sit down and listen to like uh, Eric B and Rakim. I had to sit all the way, took it all the way back to like, uh, you know, Busy B 
and Kumo D uh, and like rappers yeah. like that, you know, like just kind of learning, you know, the history of it. And the I last... remember, yeah, like, you know, we had to know, okay, this is where it started. You got to know where you came from to be able to move forward and push the culture forward. And I know that yeah. that's something that you were very passionate about. We had a conference call before, you know, the interview, and you're very passionate about moving the culture forward. So, you know, just kind of explain that, like, how, what is your vision of, like, moving the culture forward and how you want to uh, see things go? Yeah, well, shout out to your dad, too, um, for help raising an MC. You know, just let oh, yeah, you know, it pop. <laughs> and it was lessons, man. It was it was big on lessons. Um, you know, um, I'm Muslim, and mm -hmm. when I came into hip hop, we were all you know studying the five percenters, different things like that, just to try to make us better and doper, mm -hmm. and and so on, so on. So it's like it was it's the that being raised around the, you know, people teaching the poor righteous teacher, knowing mm -hmm. that what I'm doing and as I'm teaching, um, knowing that, um, you know, uh, Karis One, this is mm -hmm. my philosophy. Those type of things, uh, those that you have to remember, we come from an era where we didn't have many black heroes. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't like probably your dad's age and probably more, you had uh, Mr. T. You know what I'm saying? Was our, you know, our hero. Like, we was mm -hmm. pressed to get that Mr. T doll. And, <laughs> like, and then you see, you can see, because, like, our black heroes are still legends to the day, from Michael mm -hmm. Jordan to, you know, Mike Tyson. Like, our black mm -hmm. heroes, we didn't have many black heroes during that 90s era. And mm -hmm. so my, my thing was to always keep that, that image of a black hero. Like, I mean, later on, corporations is started to make us villains. Mm. But even when the when the when the black hero were doing something negative, he still was a hero to us. Cause we didn't <laughs> have people don't realize we didn't have thorough guys mm -hmm. on the screen. Like before everybody was looking like, you know, Prince and, and before that everybody was like Michael. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we didn't have any thorough images of of of, of men, and so mm. hip hop has provided that. Hip hop provided that, and it's going away now. And that's why cats like yourself that have a, a you know a masculine and um, and great energy need to be a part of the of the, of the industry right mm -hmm. now and and pushing their their music on because. It's you can you can tell it's it's, it's basically old it's energy it's, shift, but it, it's, it's definitely yeah, an energy shift in thing. another direction. It's a good thing yeah. because yeah, y'all come out. You know, mm -hmm. the great thing about it is the great ones come out in yeah. in the moment when it's whack. You know what I'm saying? So that's <laughs> the good thing. Because the thing about it, this go to some people bef before if you know music, which I know you know. Yeah, music before disco. People thought disco was whack. And what came mm -hmm. out of disco? Hip hop. Hip hop. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. around this time, or when, when everything is whack, just something great comes out of it. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just waiting, you know, to work with and, and help catapult and hold up the, the one that's going to change it. Mm. I want to be like, I know that I found him or I heard <laughs> him or I was. Y'all niggas late. I've been put. I've been put dude on. I've been. Mm -hmm. I did been. You know, listening to his music, and that I'm still that. I'm still a fan. Just like how people fan of you know the NBA and the and the NFL. I'm a fan of it. Just that same way. That same. Yo, thing. that's dope. That's where you know the passion is yeah. there because you're still a fan. Even if I was to like put the mic down one day, just decide, all right, I've, I've spit all the rhymes that I want to spit. Like I'm still going to be tuned in. Like I'm like that now Fridays when new music releases and stuff, it's like, uh, that's the first thing I do is check out who, who got some heat and who don't just ready to yeah. see, hear what the next person got to say. Cause like, that's what the culture is all about. Shoot. But have you ever, I mean, and you ain't doing nothing wrong. Have you ever seen, uh, a uh, number one draft pick of an NBA team not sit and watch uh, ESPN? No. <laughs> you never seen him like some cat that's like playing ball 
that's about to come up. He's looking at what's going on in, in, in his field. He's mm -hmm. going to look at that. He's going to look at that and say, oh, he know who coming, who going to be playing for so-and-so this year, who gonna, yeah. who just graduated. Because why? That's his field. And, 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 um, and, and millions and billions of dollars are made in that field. And so we got to kind of take it the same way. And hip-hop, even when you don't like it, like, you know, people, <clears throat> I don't like Drake or I hate Kanye's wagon, but, like, still know about it. Like, mm -hmm. in, in, in your field, because now you know what they're comparing so and you'll be able to always, I guess for younger artists, they're always you'll be always able to compete at any level of mm -hmm. the sound, the radio sound, or where or your sound should go a little bit higher and be doper mm -hmm. than you know what I'm saying the sound on the radio, or maybe I can get a radio one of those sounds, or maybe in my crates I got something like that, or you know, on, on my zip drive. Yeah. Crazy. It's all changed now. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, something like that. That's you know, we got to just get back to like, okay, the 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 corniness of it, and, and what I fight against is I'm tired of us battling. Mm. Like that's the same Jim Crow. Like you know, what I'm saying we still on chain gang shit. Like I'm tired of talking to another person and downing them for an hour, and then we both broke. We both, <laughs> not, you know, we both don't have Jay Z success. Yeah, like I want to. That's just like that's the <clears throat> part I want to throw away and kind of keep the part of the creativity, so to hear how creative that the artist can be without having to capitalize on someone's death or gang membership mm -hmm. or any of that. Like that's what I want to get to. Like, is you just dope? Like Grand Pooba was dope. Like, yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? It, uh, Buster was dope. It didn't it had to come with nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't have to sell me on it. I saw it for myself. He was dope. No genders, no secret agendas, no, no, yeah. you know, politics, nothing yeah. behind it. Are you just dope? Is your voice dope? Yeah. Is, is the delivery dope? Is the beat dope? Like, I wanted people to get back to loving that. You know yeah. about about music, cause I don't care about the antics. You know, it's like everybody get on social media, start acting a fool, or we saw this whole thing with Kanye and him doing like three different listening, and you don't know when the album's actually gonna drop until it finally does. Like everybody gets wrapped up in that. I, all I care about is if it's dope. Like, That's I forgot what I'm saying. all That's about what I'm all that BS that y'all was doing, you. all the antics and stuff. It's like okay, cool. That was funny or that was entertaining. But when it comes to the rhymes and it comes to the music, like, is it dope? And that's basically all that matters at the end of the day. Yeah, that's why I'm on the phone with you, Holmes. I'm just <laughs> not going. It's like because you see you. Uh, shout out to my man, <laughs> LinkedIn TV, man. Oh, like, Bash, yeah. Shout out to him. Man, definitely. That's that, that dude right there, he going to raise a kingdom. But like I said, those are, I'm I'm on the phone with like minded people. Like I'm not giving. I can't afford to give my energy to nobody right now. And then when you look at when you look at uh, it's just like anybody that give any of that shit attention, mm -hmm. like they gotta get the fuck away from me, man. Like I don't even want to talk mm -hmm. to a nigga that's talking about that. You know why? Because you dumb enough to know you got two of the biggest people like. He got white folk wearing his shoes. Yeah. It is it is beyond. <laughs> you got white folks waiting to his shoes to drop, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got Drake. Now, Drake have a date at the Dodge Stadium, and he have a listening party at another state. If you are good, like, people don't understand. You got to look at the houses they come at. And that's why I say you got to be a student of the game. Mm -hmm. Everybody know that's that Clyde Davis, Whitney Bobby. Uh, drama like uh we wouldn't want it he wouldn't be at the level he at if he, if it wasn't for the Kim Kardashian situation mm -hmm. and then we talk about that then we talk about his divorce and so we take away from he dope yeah to the point that that, that that he has he's living on the drama he's living on uh you know he's living off of uh, his, his his you know 
the the father turning into a lady type shit. You know, he's yeah. he's living off of that instead of living off of is it a great body of work? Right. And that, and that's where I want to be like, we didn't know. I mean, one thing I got to get, you know, for our, er, we didn't know, you know, <laughs> you know, if a dude, if a dude put out a record and be like, oh, he's a pussy ass nigga. He's a sucker. He, <laughs> he ain't no, you know, right. We could say all that about the rappers that we saw growing up on MTV or BET. We didn't know. We didn't know mm -hmm. no drama behind them. <laughs> we didn't know who the baby brother was. Mm -hmm. Was he having strippers? You know what I'm saying? We don't know nothing. We just yeah. knew they was nice. Yeah. And that's the difference between that's the difference between the the, the what's going on right now and, 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 and what was going on back then. And we just mm -hmm. gotta get back to like, is you dope? Is V album? better than the, the last one yeah or you know who he got featured on the joint b better than the scandal you know he was up in roof chris fighting the other night <laughs> they like that's that's the scandal instead yeah. of just like he got good music yeah man hopefully we can get back to that sooner than later but okay let's get back to you though because i, I want to make sure that the people get the story of you know yashua black indian Man, so first of all, tell me, because I know you started rhyming in D.C., and D.C. is primarily for a long time known for Go-Go. Yeah. And a lot of, for a lot of people, that's still the, like, the primary music. So how was it coming up when you were, you know, trying to be a rapper in a space where it really wasn't like, uh, you know, it's not like New York or how Atlanta is now where it's, it, was, um, it was like rappers everywhere. Like being a rapper from D.C., like how, did, how was that coming up? And like you know, getting to where you are now. Shoot, man, I'ma tell you, v, man. DC is no joke. It's not because see, you know, we got a big thing. I'm not for DMV. Mm. See, I'm from DC, Northeast DC, mm -hmm. and a lot of the way since Wale, the industry has tried to lump us together. If you know anything about DC history. Mm -hmm. uh Maryland and Virginia we are the consumer state so record companies look at us as consumers they don't look mm. at us as let's go get artists from there it wasn't until for real till you know for real pop with shake your rump with Teddy Riley mm -hmm. that they were actually looking at like Virginia Beach Norfolk but mm -hmm. not DC we've always been a, a place where we get musicians so musicians, mm. drummers, bass players, the keyboard players because of the church and then the go-go. Mm. We've always been in Maxwell, Michelle Angicello. We've been, a, you know, real neo-soulish, you know, yeah. Raheem and Divine type of thing going on. So it was never not looking for it. So at the time when I was rhyming and I came into it, they used to have these uh, Zulu Nation was at Howard University. And so oh. I used, you know, I used to sell weed. I had a couple <laughs> friends that went to Howard. Yeah. And they used to tell me, come, because, you know, you know, if you lived uptown, rest in peace to Chucky Thompson, he lived mm -hmm. right across the street from Howard. He lived in Lee Joy Park. And so mm -hmm. Lee Joy Park was out of, you know, out of control in, in the early 80s and, and, and 90s. So, you know, I built relationships. Like I knew Guru that engineered for Jay Z before, mm. you know, he blew up. He was actually under Puffy because Puffy had left a big foundation and groups, and mm -hmm. his label was started in DC. So mm. I knew a lot of those guys. Tracy Lee, shout out to Tracy Lee, good friend of mine. You know, it's party time. So these dudes would invite me to their house. I smoked with these guys. I, I listened and listened to them going in crates. And they were working on records back uh, back in the uh, 90s. And so we used to have a hip-hop convention. And so I would meet people like Common and so on, so on, that would come down. You still the Yard Fest that they have at Howard, mostly mm -hmm. every uh, homecoming. So we would come to them and I'd just battle. Battling mm -hmm. was everything. And so I battled a lot, and then somebody put me on to a lady named Tony Blackman. She's uh, from Freestyle Union. 
and she actually uh, went around the world in the UN teaching improvisational hip hop. And she still does oh, it. She dope. has a couple films and, book, and books out. But she went to uh, Howard and um, they brought me down to uh, Bitch Hair in Southeast. Uh, mm -hmm. And we had a freestyle unions there where people would bring their own beats on tape or ADATs. And we would basically rhyme about different things she would pick. I had the opportunity to be in the house one night with a guy named Kokai and Sub Z. And they were already on tour with Steve Coleman. And Steve mm. Coleman, he founded The Roots. The Roots, the band, and oh, some Jimmy dope. Fallon. Yeah. So he played saxophone. He also played with like Miles and, and, and Coltrane. And so he was taking artists from, um, he. that's how he had the, uh, Tariq and um, Air, uh, LB. And he had a, a, an Air, and he had them already on tour. So mm -hmm. he uh got me, I was 13 years old, and I got we got signed to BMG RCA Victor uh as the first project, and I did some projects on his record, and uh, then I got signed um in the in the states at MCA Universal, and I dropped my first album, Get Him Sights, when I was 21. Oh so I was like, yeah, and it wasn't a lot of artists. We have our legends here, Stinky Dean, uh, Nonchalant, uh, DC Scorpio, Tony Blunt. We have those core uh, artists from the uh, late 70s to the 80s. We got some um, DJ Cool. Um, we got some some legends. But when I came out, I represent the youth. I was the youth at, mm -hmm. at the time. So it was definitely different. And then I was touring at the time so i had the opportunity to go to the south and if any of my fans uh show out or on here to get them size record for 1999 was a was a south record because i knew they was coming i would do the bayou classics oh, in dope. new orleans and um and man, I would I was already being put on the cash money and no limit. Like I was mm -hmm. down there and watching them um, at their shows or watching how people would go in the corner stores and get their record and what the youngest was listening to. And I knew it was coming. So I was mm -hmm. like, I did the South. And that's the people have always, I think has always made people, you know, not make me more of a household name. I'm more mm -hmm. of a, like an MF Doom, like you have to know about me because I won't um, just prescribe to one sound. Like, mm. you're not going to give me one genre. Like, you know, I might like, uh, you know, the Down South with a triple eight, 808 on it. Mm -hmm. Or I might like a dirty basement New York beat. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? And, and I know you share that too. I know you yeah. share that style too. Like I've heard the records like, you got records that's top radio 100 ready. Mm -hmm. And then you got records that's like, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can I can get down with the dirty of them, like the yeah. penmanship. And, um, yeah, that's uh, that's more like that, that's me. Like, I won't let them just say, give me that one style because you know, people don't understand when you follow those trends, you go when that trend goes. Exactly. Like, you go when... <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be like all to the finger snap rap, <laughs> <laughs> yo. Because this guy, or, right, or bring it back, or bring it yeah. back. That's hip hop, or bring it back. That's when bring it back. That's the gift we we, we like golfers, bro. You can mm -hmm. retire out of hip hop. That's a, it's like golf. Golf be having dudes out there with with uh with you know looking six months pregnant playing golf, <laughs> but. Hip hop is the same way. Hip hop, yeah. you can't retire. Out. You can recycle anything. You can go back and do a woo record and give them something new. You can rhyme over a uh, Megan Stallion beat and then the next day, you know what I'm saying, do yeah. a Will Smith remix. This is a gift. It's you know, a gift. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like you could do whatever in hip hop as long as it's authentic to you. It never sounds dated. Like when you exactly. purposely chase the trends and stuff, like you say, oh, okay. This is what they doing, so I'm doing that. I'm gonna hop on this wave, but if it's not authentically you, then people it's gonna be cool for a little bit, but it's not gonna last. But it don't matter what yeah. you do, as long as it's you, 
it's 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 timeless. <laughs> yeah, it's timeless. That's what I'm saying. I wanted to make classics. I wanted to make timeless. Like, there's no way you can't go to a cookout, even though you know it's not your top ten record. You're not riding around in your car listening to electric doing electric slide, but when that <laughs> record come on, yeah. you know you had a cookout, no. a wedding, some type of a uh, 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 function. Family reunion. Right? Gonna, yeah, yeah you're going to have a good time. So my thing is like this, even in that case, I want to make those classics. Mm. I want to make sure that, they, you know, when you hear Earth, Wind & Fire or when you hear Roy Ayers and when you hear those records, mm -hmm. you hear those records, you like, damn. Like, yeah, you know you got that feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's what we like artists, the artists like people put out so much music to show how fast and one, you know, to show how much money you spend in two, because it costs so much to do hip hop. It do. That's why a lot of people you know, don't understand I, I, yeah, how much yeah, it yeah, costs. Yeah, <laughs> it, it costs a, a lot. It, and it will it will drive you to lose your mind if you're not grounded. Like, so mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That's why I tell people to do it because you love it. Don't do it. Don't do it ever because you try and get a check. If you try and get a check, man, go get you a job, bro. Yeah. Because the energy that you got to spend in, like, if you love hip hop, you gonna be up three, four in the morning trying to find the note, mm -hmm. trying to find the sample, trying to find something. You be looking at movies. You be looking at reading books. You be anything can absorb to bait create the hip hop. So you mm -hmm. always. You're always shopping in yourself, studying self. But if you if you don't if you don't love it, you know, oh man, I just it's a it's a photo, you know. Yeah, you, you know what? Like a regular job. <laughs> yeah, like you hurt me a lot. Like a regular job is gonna make you mad because it's like you know because you're putting in all that work and you you don't feel like you're getting enough back because you're thinking of it monetarily instead of exactly. Yo, know, I'm putting this energy in because I love it and I love being able to contribute to it to the culture to, to contribute to this thing we got that we we all love and we all want to see grow and you know go beyond where it is right now <laughs> then it's all has to be one just get rich man it's just it's a get back the 80s and, it, and it's our fault you know it's a it's the <laughs> it's the our generation fault like because my generation we 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 just party so much we didn't we didn't really pay attention Mm. When we had all, if you look at the way hip hop was structured, we had all the tools in the beginning. Mm. We having having people talk about going back to Africa. Real talk, it was so yeah. we 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 was finding ourselves. We was driving our parents crazy. We was killing the status quo, and then people at the end of the day they want money. Mm -hmm. And so the money started to, it rules. So when Wu-Tang dropped cash rules, everything around me, mm -hmm. people, people was not even understanding that like it rules everything around me. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you got to be the master of that. And, uh, and hip hop doesn't give you that. You know, hip hop is the only genre that never grows up. Mm. It's a, it, yeah. it never matures. It stays one age forever, and that's why people can't develop, you know, mm -hmm. in hip hop because they don't love it. The people that yeah. love it, you know, they 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 the people that love it are successful without no contract, mm -hmm. no video, no 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 features, no nothing. And the people that love it are successful without you know the 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 kit, you know, yeah. the chain. The car, you know, the the, the, yeah. the time you're gonna get on it. It's it's the people that really be in the record store looking for the samples, mm -hmm. the people that really be up two, three, four, five in the morning on their computers making beats, mm -hmm. can't get it until they go to sleep. The, the you know, those people, man, are successful. It, and you and I be wanting to share that with a lot of uh, young artists that you got to see it. You got to be, feel it from that. Mm -hmm. Like, don't feel, if you don't feel it from that, if you don't feel it for the fact that you opened your joint and you making the beat or you recording yourself or you in the studio and you recording and you putting it down, if that ain't it, if that's not your joy, then the, you're not meant to do it. 
Right. There's real talk. You know, a lot of dudes be missing it. Man, it's sad when you see somebody's fire go out because it wasn't exactly what they thought it was going to be. But at the end of the day, you got to do it. It's, you know, you you watched it on TV and you thought it was going to be like that. Okay, now you know the real, but you got to be able to still, you know, keep it going. If you love it, keep it going. Even if it never makes you a dime, it's just got to do it for the love. But I know you have another passion that I know you wanted to talk about. We actually linked up with Bash on it. You also have a cooking show. That yeah. you do. So you're passionate about food. So where your passion for food come from and what made you decide to want to uh do your own show? Man, the grill, the grill father, it came in um, you know, when I'm you know, I was in Texas and I got sick around Christmas. And mm -hmm. so uh around Christmas time I got sick and uh and I didn't know what was going on, and I and I couldn't eat out anymore because by this time I'm traveling, I'm working with people from rap a lot. I'm working mm -hmm. with a lot of artists from Houston, Texas, and from Dallas, and from San Antonio, different. And um, and I wasn't eating; I was eating on the go, which was destroying me, as you know. Mm -hmm. as yeah, I'm, I you know, moving around. <laughs> yeah, so like um. I was like, nah, I gotta start cooking. My mm -hmm. grandmother was a hell of a cook. Like, if you grew up in Trinidad, uh, that's in Northeast DC, mm -hmm. you know about my grandmother. So cooking and her and her cakes and stuff was famous. Mm -hmm. And so um I just took I I mean, I was always in trouble. So <laughs> you know, you gotta <laughs> you're always in trouble as a kid. You gotta sit with grandma. You yeah. gonna sit with grandma five times out the, out, the, out the year so you know i was sitting with um with uh grandma and just you know learning how to prepare the meals and how to clean the chicken and how to you know what i'm saying make the macaroni mm -hmm. and cheese and the grains and so on so on so on so when i had to start cooking for myself for medical reasons mm -hmm. um you know i i started and then um uh, the grill thing came in with I was trying to make uh things that taste good because then I was going vegan trying to save the kitten. Mm. So I was going all vegan and I was trying to find anything, you know, th th certain foods, uh, you mm. know, shout out to Link LinkedIn TV, man. They was like, man, we got we gonna work with Grill Father, man. I was like, it's an honor, man. I already see what they doing. And mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, you know, it's just a I wanted to make meal, you know, because we 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 man, you know, man, man, yeah. throw it down. Like, <laughs> you know, they be guys sleeping on us. Like the first thing is ladies be like, what you bring to the table? Be like, yeah, um, I cook it. Like, I cook too. I'm <laughs> <make that>. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta show them we can cook, right? We get, we, and they gotta see real man. I want, you know, real guys like ourselves out here mm -hmm. cooking, like, you know. And showing that we can feed our families and let our wives take the day off, and mm -hmm. you know, and we can prepare the meals, and, and you know, and feed our family if we have to. Yo, facts, man. My mom used to always say, because that's what I ended up learning how to cook. Like she taught me and my brothers, because it's like, yo, you wait on the woman to cook for you, you're gonna starve. And it's just like, yeah. yo, I sit there and I, I had to think, because you know, like you said, I was on the move. I, you know, after I left the house, and I'm just. Oh, okay, I'm too busy to, or I'm too busy to think about dinner. I'm just gonna grab some, uh, some takeout here, or like Joe hit a drive through. And after a while, it's like, <laughs> man, I'm sick. I'm tired all the time. Like, what's going on? Realize, cause like I'm destroying myself not taking that time to, to like prepare a meal. So I was like, y'all, okay, got to put that food down and got to do that. That's why I like like watching, cause I've I watched people a few of the episodes. Really enjoy the way you put it down, cause it's not like. You know, like how you see on the Food Network and stuff, where it's all frilly. Like you seen like a real guy yeah. up there, just like showing people how to like prepare these Ooh, meals. Man, we and stuff be and playing beats in the back and everything. <laughs> well, we, I play beats in the back of my jug and everything. I want people to have. Yeah, I want. I want everything to kind of when they. You know, we, we got a bad rap right now in in in, in marketing. Mm -hmm. Like when you think about it, like it's not like you know some companies. I got to give give shots out to some companies. They do make us look, you know, like we're saying more black men in commercial that, uh, you know what I'm saying, are fathers, you know, or married 
or something like or with the child and so it's like they're showing us and, and that goes to show where they you know financially we might be in the next couple of years that's mm. a lot of people don't know that's like a, a subliminal seduction and marketing you know mm. for 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 corporations like you know like like the people uh boxing boxing is political like a lot of people mm. don't know that like they, you know it's do it, it's usually the biggest fight doing the biggest uh uh voting yeah. you know for president or congress and senate so like we i come from knowing that so mm -hmm. you know i'm a, i'm a always uh look at things like that i'm a always dissect things mm. i'm going to always be that type of guy with with how i move because we canes we not mm. we not the average like we, it's only because uh they mass produce bullshit that we forget that how great we are like we be forget how how great we are like how great it is to do this how Dang. great it is for we're not on here talking about um gossip we on here talking we two professionals and and, and known for our professions and mm -hmm. we're talking music yeah come on we're talking music we're talking entertainment we're talking corporate business like that's and that's the greatness yeah but we don't get that you don't get that market and so mm. my thing is like we just pay attention to if you want it like really want it really want the positive uh guys uh like the you know bringing you entertainment bringing you topics you know uh linkedin tv breaking new artists bringing mm. new shows finding new ways i'm like i'm for that like i don't want to be in this and be like oh he had a lot of cars or oh you know he he, he had a big house or he did this or that no i want to do it like getting to the point where they talking about us like steve jobs mm -hmm. like we did something great in, in the corporate we did something that can um benefit solve some problems we did that with our platform yeah you know i want that i want that you know like my you know my grandkids like i don't have to work anymore because what they were doing Mm -hmm. you know yeah I, you know i want that feeling i don't want to just be like you know they was stunting for a while and then he owned a bunch of roy rogers chicken places like <laughs> no i don't want that. you know what i'm saying i want something great yeah. from it that i can keep continue it can keep moving it would like who built some of these institutions like they still them joints going to be gone when we dead and gone our kids dead and gone. Mm. They do some of these establishments will be here forever. Some yeah. slogans I want to be in, like deal me into that to that. Mm. Like longevity business, so we can like we own pieces of what we're doing. And and like don't want to be on everybody else's level. Cause that's 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 like the problem. Everybody mm. wanna do it like them. Like people take the image works so good. Mm. It got grown women with bachelor's and master's degree twerking. Just think about that. <laughs> it works so well. The image works so well. Che, you you a young guy. You yeah. you been to you been to the day parties. You see yeah. them, you got grown women with degrees. Probably you even know. Yeah. Why they twerking? Master's doctorate. <laughs> Why they twerking? Because the image works so well. So yeah. hip hop is that strong of an image, it it take people that 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 want, years ago would not even look its way, look mm -hmm. people's its way, and now it's. I seen I seen it myself. I seen I seen it myself, bro. I seen grown women with mm -hmm. master degrees and hand on my waist on my thought shit, and I couldn't believe it, <laughs> singing it. Yo, the brand is strong, man. Hip hop, hip hop is a. It's a force, man. It just so it, I, I want it. I want it. I'm with my guys. I'm with I'm with guys that want to take over it, right? I'm with yeah. guys that want to go to war for it. Like it's a war. I, at first, I thought it was competing. You said your dad put you on the, uh, you know, Kumo Dan, Busy B. Mm -hmm. Like that battle created one of the greatest rappers. Yeah, you know, if he never stepped on the stage and, and took Busy B down, we still be rapping like, put your hands in the air. And yeah. raise the <laughs> Think about that shit. Yeah. Too, bro. <laughs>
we gotta we gotta we gotta go smack at the, the that industry. We gotta go at all of it. Whack like where was the rappers at when Lil Nas X dropped this video? Like where was the dope? Where was I'm coming for your head, rappers? Where was the raw sixteen? Where was well, the you, where you was in there? Yeah, I, I don't want to get into that too much, but you know why. You, know. <laughs> you already know. You already know why that didn't. Man, I, man, King, I didn't say nothing. King, King Cuddy, I didn't say nothing King Cuddy on Saturday Night Live, they know. make a rapper break out the book. Because anybody, make no rappers anybody that you've seen spoke about it, they got, they got, got, they got them out of there. They got them out of there. <laughs> so now I remember Karis one through. Pim Don off, off the, the stage. stage. <laughs> come on, bro. Yeah. I come from that hip hop. It's kind of, it's, it, you know, and Onyx had to make a record about it. Slam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, let the boys, let the boys be boys. boys. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. It's, it's, man. Yo, I mean, I, Trust me, I feel I'm right there with you, brother. Like I, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather be uh, Karis one on PM Dawn off the stage than everybody afraid to, you know, call the shit out now, like how it's supposed to be called out. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, like Tyler cre creator, I listened to him. Of course, his famous rant on, uh, you know, on Flex, <laughs> but he young and can rhyme. Yeah. Can't take it away from him. He can rhyme. He can make some dope beats too. But he was able to defend himself because he can rhyme. Yeah. Right? Right? But no rapper has challenged that. Like, they giving you one way, but nobody's saying, man, I slap foul. I don't care about what you're talking. Nobody. Now it's what hip hop was. Mm -hmm. That's what hip hop was. It was the busy B, Kumo D. Yeah, and and that's what I'm saying. We lost. We losing that. Nobody's striking back. It's like yeah. it's. I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. And then everybody wants to say I'm a rapper, and then I'm a rapper, but I'm fine with the fuckery. But I'm I'm scared to say something because I don't I want I don't want to lose popularity. See, not even just that like, though. I also look at I'm uh, I'm mad at how they won't speak on certain things, but they they'll definitely speak out on other things. You know, like cops. You know, I you saw people quiet. They're quiet when it's something dealing with us, with black folks. Yeah. They might pop in, donate a little bit of money, but won't say too much. They hide from that. But yo, they come out of the woodworks to you know strike down anybody else. Anybody else is being, the, you know, like uh, stop Asian hate or people is going stuff going on with gay folks or stuff like that. And I like, come in with me on that. Yeah. 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 I can't even believe we even we talking about like man. Have you ever seen Bruce Leroy? We love them. Yes. First of all, we love we. If I'm from. I don't know where you where. where in your town where your Chinatown at, but we love motherfucker. It was, we got ninja stars all, all the way down to the goddamn karate shoes and white socks. We wonder we, that's where the hammer pants came from, from Bruce Lee. Yeah. We we was at, we went in love with their culture. Who they think they sell all those movies to? Who sold the lifestyle of eating and all that? Many black kids walking around here eating with chopsticks. Look, they create the hate mm. period they create the hate there's no way we you got kids be be doing karate ain't never seen bruce lee a day in their life wake up you you seen them you got little brothers little cousins you 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 they doing karate and don't even know karate mm. don't even know chinese or japanese they don't know the difference they don't know nothing they be out karate chopping each other i seen it <laughs> kid ain't never seen no kung fu movie a day in their life, it's in our DNA to want to roundhouse kick somebody or <laughs> something like that. It's a part of us. So it could never be no hate. They us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're the only ones to be in the community, even though they've for years put 
bulletproof glass up to keep us away from them. Yeah. They still in there. How many mama songs do you know? Hey, mama song, you got some blunts, mama song. You got the malt liquor, mama song. You got me doing my nails, mama song. Come on, bro. Like, yeah. if they create the hate, we hate nothing. Hip hop, like, when you deal with us, hip hop is non racist. Mm -hmm. The most racist thing in hip hop is the word, one word, nigga. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's nowhere, man. You can put hip hop, man. It's grandmothers dancing the Gucci Man, man. Yeah. It's grandfathers no Gucci Man songs. <laughs> Drake songs. I seen an old woman. Yo, yo, one time. Mama, it's new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> Grandma Crippin. <laughs> <laughs> Slow man, hip hop man, so strong man. It's no racism in hip hop man, and they create the hate. Mm. You know, it's the engine, and they need oil, and that's what people be forgetting. Mm. And the oil be the bullshit. That's how the machine run off bullshit. Yo, man, I could talk to you all day. It feels like because we we <laughs> right here, but yo, I gotta wrap it up because this out this episode will be like two hours long, and then Bash has to cut no, it down. No, no, anyway. yeah. So, but yo, man, thank you so much. I'm glad to have a legend like yourself on the show, man. I really man, appreciate you taking blessings. time out and speaking to me, man. Is there any last last words you want to leave with the people before we sign off? Man, just love the music, man. Love the music like my man right here. Love it. If y'all doing it, love yeah, it brother. so it can, you know what I'm saying, it can transcend over the other people, man. Yo, facts, man. And I definitely got to get you back on the show show again soon because we're like, I know we got a lot more we, I want to talk to you about and like a lot more that the people need to hear. But until next time, it's been your boy Vinny Dangerous. This has been Dangerous Minds. Yashua Black Indian. Much love. Peace. A few weeks ago, they told me to keep my distance. I don't like yo anyway. Call, call, get to step it. When I started speaking, new one day, this shit will be a weapon. With my flow, so infectious. Anybody can get it. Who am I?